Bet you didn't see this one coming. Presenting the review that no one asked for. The Barracuda from 1992. Santa brought me a GoPro, and it was high time that I played with another Joe vehicle in the rock pools. So I present to you, G.I. Joe Berg's review of another G.I. Joe sub, the Barracuda. So first, let's address the elephant in the room. If you and your enemy both have submarines that also fly, why do you introduce a submarine that can't? Well, realism. Seems strange to demand that from a latter vehicle, but submarines and aircraft have very little in common. They may both be pressurized craft, but the one is designed to keep an atmosphere in, and the other is designed to keep a denser substance out. Submarines are built tough. They are heavy, and need that weight to achieve sufficient depth. Air is purged and water is taken on into ballast tanks in order to sink. Without doing so, you are just wasting propulsion and energy in an unwinnable war on simple physics. The shark and sea ray, the many subs from the bug and the hammerhead are only meant to play around in the shallows. If you need to get deeper, you need the Barracuda. One man crew, two barreled cannon, three torpedo capacity, she's built for doing damage. You're even encouraged to ram your enemy's vessels with the barbs that run alongside and over the top of this nasty little bugger. Very 20,000 leagues under the sea. And as I say, much tougher than anything else she might encounter down there. But like a number of vehicles from this vintage, the Barracuda is built around a feature. It's a sub, so it dives and resurfaces. But don't hate. It's not like the shark was absent of any dive features of its own. And when you check this one out, it might just win you over. So this is how you get your dive feature functioning correctly on your Barracuda. Take an effervescent, I'm using some kind of generic energy effervescent. Crush it or break the tablet so that it fits into the chamber. Place the yellow cap on top so that it fits snugly. Then place your diver. Wetsuit version 3, perfect. Now this next part's important. You need to seal up the top of the tower so that air bubbles do not escape because that is the portion that will trap the bubbles that the effervescent tablet will release. Next you place the sub in the body of water. Now be sure to tilt it forward and backwards to release the air bubbles that may already be trapped inside because otherwise she'll just float back to the surface without the effervescence help. Once that's done, she should sink. If, of course, yours still has its weight inside. Once the effervescent meets with water, however, it will bubble, release air, which should get trapped in the tower, if you've sufficiently sealed it, and it will maintain a neutral buoyancy. Maybe even a positive buoyancy. What's fun however is if the effervescent melts bit by bit it should allow for several dives and resurfaces as we see here. The Barracuda Mini Sub and the third release of Wetsuit are synonymous with each other. Well, at least for me they are. The Barracuda was an alien, some strange vehicle that came from a far off land, Hong Kong. My buddy Dave brought a Barracuda and wetsuit home from Hong Kong. This oddball sub was nowhere to be found in my collection of Joe catalogues, and I admit at the time it was fresh, new and exciting. The play feature mentioned earlier was the reason I would go on to buy my own Barracuda, but not for the reason you may think. Details of the Barracuda's dive feature listed within the blueprints spoke to the 9 year old me's curiosity and was boss bound as soon as Dave lent it to me. Whoops! Turns out the included effervescent tablet was a one show pony and I couldn't really get the feature to work anyway. I ended up buying a CUDA when they appeared on toy shelves in pick and pay just to replace the tablet for Dave's CUDA. Sorry Dave. An oddball toy that, 
let's be honest here, is not the coolest thing ever made, but somehow elicits its own kind of charm. Easy to hold in one hand, it ended up in many of my Joe adventures, facing off against the bug, and well, only the bug, really. I never had any of Joe or Cobra's earlier aquatic offerings, and I think that was the case for many kids in South Africa at the time, leaving the Barracuda to stalk toy aisles solo. My only complaint with the Barracuda was a removable top section being able to completely separate from the main hull meant I seldom opened it up and put a driver inside. My imagination could quickly fill in the blanks due to not being able to see if the vehicle was occupied or not. Kinda kills the whole point of being piloted in the first place. I still like to think of it as a remotely operated drone. Oh yeah, it also means that for some reason I only have the top half of my original CUDA. Guess I must have opened it up at some point for the last time. I can't resist, I have to point out. Paul is such a slavish follower of instructions. Notice that he has the remnants of a little string tied to his barracuda lid? <laughs> well, check it out. To prevent loss of sub, when playing in a large or deep body of water, remember to tie a string around the feeder tube of spring action launcher. This will prevent the sub from swimming away. Paul, didn't you say you played with this in your bathtub? What a chop. So this is how things played out in my childhood battles. It was a David and Goliath scenario as the tiny one-man Joe sub squared off against the multiple subs and weapon systems of the Hammerhead. My folks didn't have a pool back then, but apart from that and the pair of grown men in this demonstration, this is pretty much how it went down. With Cobra Island under attack, coastal defenses spring into action, spearheaded by Decimator's Hammerhead. The first wave is the nimble attack subs. They locate the threat, but the Barracuda is ready with a volley of torpedoes. The second sub evades, but can't get deep enough to fire its own torpedoes. It comes back around and ah! slams into the Barracuda. The Joe vehicle's tough hide survives the encounter. The Cobra sub does not. Should have stuck to scaling walls, Night Creeper. With the Rangers closing, it's now up to the sea slits. The Barracuda is out of cover and in the shallows. An easy target for torpedoes? Wrong! A crash dive evades them swiftly. The sleds open fire with their guns, but to little effect, and the response is decisive. Beaten under the waves, the shrewd decimator pulls the main vehicle back to the shore to rethink his strategy. But his fate is sealed thanks to spring-loaded missile fire. The Barracuda is victorious. With no comic book appearances that I know of, this vehicle was purely the territory of the Deke TV series, where once again we see Wetsuit helming it in a series of perilous missions beneath the waves. Its main antagonist, the many subs that you detach from the Hammerhead, and the Eels to pilot them. Though Deke seemed to confuse eels with sludge vipers. Whoops. And check this out. The Barracuda here is presented as a massive sub that can launch smaller sea sled type subs. G.I. Joe badly needed one of these. This vehicle doesn't get much love or exposure. 
If I didn't have it as a child and immediately made it Joe's only line of defense against the Cobra Bug and Hammerhead, I probably would have never sought this thing out. But let me just put this toy into perspective with a little anecdote. Every location I went to to film this thing, I either had to deal with a throng of submarine. kids wanting to play with my toy submarine, yeah. or parents asking me where they could purchase one. Check this out. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. It's a tough act to follow, eh? Thanks, my boy. What's your name? <laughs> oh, it's awkward, but it doesn't have to be. Callum, do you mind if I have my boat back? <laughs> Thanks, my boy. Thank you, sir. I got one for you. This one floats. This one floats and everything. Now, I turned the camera away as I walked off, but you can still distinctly hear the thud as the less than impressed boy callously tossed his own boat aside. Yep, even when your vintage is 90s Joe, you're still a better toy than most. And all you guys out there who didn't like the Barracuda before this video, <laughs> I challenge you to not want one now. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video as much as we enjoyed making it. If you like our channel and you like what we do, if you consider supporting us, we do not have a Patreon, but we do have a GoFundMe. You see, G.I. Joburg is trying desperately to get to JoeCon 2018, and we can do it with your help. So if you'd like to support the channel, send a few dollars our way. There are some very cool incentives, and with any luck, we'll see some of you at Chattanooga, Tennessee 2018. Yo Joe, baby! <gasps>